Looking to 3D print something that's larger than your 3D printer? Wait, 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 wait. Don't buy that new 3D printer yet, because I'm going to show you exactly how to do this even on your smallest 3D printer. I'm using dovetail joints, and I've got two methods to show you. The first method is way simpler than the second, but the second method gives us the option to make a way stronger finished product. You don't want to miss this, because at the end, I'm even going to show you how to get the perfect result without wasting a lot of resources. This is very important stuff that can be really beneficial to you in the future, so make sure you stick around. The quickest option is in the slicing software. I'm using Bamboo Studio. I can select the model, hit the cut tool, and change the mode to dovetail joints. Then I can orient the cut plane, I then change the depth and width parameters, and I also adjust the tolerance, which I'll have more information on later. Then I hit keep orientation, so nothing's rotated funny, and then I can simply print this out and it's gonna fit together. This next option gives us a little bit more control. I can add multiple joints on the same plane to give the part more integrity. I start by adding a sketch on the face that I want the cut to be down. I add a line, dividing the two halves. Then I select the triangle polygon tool to create the dovetail shape. Then I remove these three lines with the trim tool, and then I duplicate this entire piece and set it off to the side. Then I select a line on the dovetail joint and I offset the edge equal to my tolerance. This next step is important. I have to extend the opposite lines of the sketch beyond the boundaries of the object so that way these lines are not impacted by our tolerance. Once I make this adjustment, I can select the sketch and extrude it into the part and change the defined parameter from subtract to intersect. This gives me the new part compensated for our tolerance. To complete the other half of the joint, I'll go to the model that I set aside earlier, and I'll simply extrude the dovetail sketch against the object. Now this joint is completed, and I can see this by moving these two parts together and viewing the tolerance. This part is good to go. One benefit of designing the model with the joints is you can add multiple joints on the same plane for added strength. This doesn't seem to be an option in the slicer right now. You can only add one joint on a single plane. Once I have my exported design in the slicer, I can split it by objects and then arrange it on multiple different build plates. There's an added latent benefit by doing this because only a quarter of the part is risked should the print fail. But there's something that I haven't told you yet because I didn't just print this out thinking it would work, I printed this out knowing it would work. How did I do that? I tested small. I used these small cubes that I printed out to test the tolerance to figure out what finish I was looking for. Then I removed unneeded parts on the design to test this at a small scale. Then I scaled it up. And then I was able to confidently print out the large piece, knowing it would fit the first time. Don't make this same mistake, I made poorly optimized test prints, which used a lot of printed material and time, and it didn't even pertain to what I was testing. I had to cut these away to get the expedited test print, and this allowed me to get the result that I was looking for in a much more timely fashion. So now you know how to use these two methods to print things that are larger than your 3D printer, and how to test small to waste the minimum amount of resources. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments about this process, or what you want to see next, share it in the comments below. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.